Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. So we are continuing our malignant lesions of oral cavity, uh, epithelial origin. So now we have verrucous carcinoma. So verrucous carcinoma, we already learned the benign type that is verrucous uh, lesion or verrucous vulgaris, which is a benign lesion, which is all commonly known as what? So this is a warty variant of squamous cell carcinoma. So last session we had covered squamous cell carcinoma in detail. So this is a warty variant that is a cauliflower like uh, verrucous appearance of squamous cell carcinoma is known as verrucous carcinoma. So let's learn the details of verrucous carcinoma. So this verrucous carcinoma which is uh, predominantly exophytic overgrowth of well differentiated keratinized epithelium which is having minimal atypia okay which is having minimal atypia and with locally destructive pushing margins at its interface with the connective tissue so that is locally destructive pushing margins destructive pushing margins at, at the interface with the connective tissue clinical features it is commonly seen in elder group with 60 to 70 years uh, highest incidence and mainly on the buccal mucosa and gingiva are the common sites which appears as a papillary with pebble surface which is sometimes covered with a white leucoplakic film and these lesions on the gingiva it may grow into the soft tissue and invade and destroy the underlying bone okay so it may destroy the bone also so regional lymph nodes are enlarged and tender which simulate metastatic tumor pain and difficulty in mastication are common complaints so this disease has a high occurrence rate in tobacco chewers so tobacco chewing is the most common etiology in all these type of squamous cell carcinoma and also smokers or snuffers or in patients having ill fitting dentures so growth is usually slow and metastasis occurs late if at all this is happening it occurs at very later period it may become more aggressive if it is irradiated in histologic features it may be extremely deceptive and it is uh, mistaken for papilloma or benign epithelial hyperplasia because of its appearance and the epithelial proliferation with downgrowth of epithelium into connective tissue but usually it is without true invasion so the well differentiated hyperplastic epithelium is organized into bulbous rite ridges which shows little mitotic activity pleomorphism or hyperchromatism and there will be cleft like spaces which is lined by a thick layer of paracaratin and paracaratin plugging so paracaratin plugging also occurs extending into the epithelium okay this paracaratin plugging will be extending to the epithelium so this cleft like spaces and paracaratin plugging uh, they these two features together constitute the hallmark of verrucous carcinoma okay so paracaratin plugging and cleft like spaces are the hallmark of verrucous carcinoma so this cleft like space is also aligned by paracaratin okay so basement membrane is generally intact and usually having a heavy inflammatory infiltrate into the connective tissue so the treatment part is basically a conservative excision and the risk of anaplastic transformation is there if it is radiated so that is all about verrucous carcinoma it is a Another variant of squamous cell carcinoma, which is commonly seen on buccal mucosa and gingiva, which is a warty variant, that is a striking feature. So, verrucous carcinoma 
has two uh, characteristic features that is paracarotene plugging and cleft like spaces which is lined by paracarotene okay so that's all about verrucous carcinoma i'll come up with a new topic in to industry and more thank you